You know what's cool? Tornado sirens. Now, as you probably already know, I love making these things. Here's a miniature model SD10 siren. I love it. it. Sounds authentic. It's pretty loud. It's great. But I think we can go bigger. Here is a miniature 2T22. This is my largest siren currently. It's pretty big, but I think we can do better than that. My plan is essentially to build a siren so big that it's pretty much a real siren. That's why we're going to need this. What is this? This is an HVAC motor. It's 1 15th horsepower, uh, 1 15 volt AC induction motor. This thing is going to drive one heck of a rotor, about 9 inch, so just for reference, these rotors are like 4 5 inch, we're going to be driving a 9 inch rotor. This thing is going to be big. So with this motor, it's got a pretty large shaft as you can see. Now my first step is to figure out what size hole is going to fit this shaft well. So that's when 3D printing comes into play. Here are little test pieces I printed. They all have the same hole shape with the little D, but they're all different sizes. I printed these to figure out precisely what size hole is going to fit it well. As you can see, it fits on, but it's so loose. Like this, this can just slide off, so that is not going to work. So that's trash. This one, however, got the job done. Ugh. Looks like 8.1 millimeter is too tight. I can't even fit it on the shaft. 8.2 millimeter, however, that does fit on, but it's very tight. Might go with that, I'm not sure yet. Ugh, wow. 8.3 millimeter gives us this. Boom. Getting pretty loose, but still fits the shaft pretty well. Now I know the approximate hole size needed to fit this motor well. The reason why I needed that was because when I'm printing that rotor, don't want it to be too tight or too loose. If it's too tight, I might never even get it on. If it's too loose, the rotor can spin out of control, so that's why it's so important to get that proper hole size. So I woke up at one in the morning uh, to be greeted with this, only to stop the print. So the print didn't come out so good. And to be honest, I don't really know why. Maybe it was just a matter of the Z offset? I don't know. What's weird is that the supports on the back of the print came out the worst. Maybe it's something to do with the extruder's fan? Well, here's the print settings I used. Leave a comment if you might know what's wrong, because I'm still puzzled. Now this right here, this is what I wanted to see. So looks like the print came out good this time, minus the stringing of course. This is printed in PETG, which is notorious and known for its stringing. Now it's time to clean this part up. These projects take a lot of skill and time to make. A subscription to the channel would mean a lot to me, so please support me and my projects by subscribing. You can see here I'm using a soldering iron. I had the genius idea to use a soldering iron to melt the strings straight off the print. If you do try attempting the same idea, please be careful, as soldering irons can get quite hot. Then I printed the so-called rotor grip, with more strings for me to deal with, of course. All right, here's the finished rotor. As you can see, my workbench is a complete mess. It took so much sanding, uh, melting, and everything to really get all those uh, strings out. The rotor is pretty clean now. Um, try to ignore these little holes. That was a prototyping error that I will not use anymore. So my original plan here was to have little pegs go in those holes there. And I just chopped them off this little ring here, but the, this is the part I originally had um, part of the model as the rotor itself. But due to support and printing problems, I uh, made it separate, and here it is. 
What I'm gonna do is glue this on and plastic weld it using a soldering iron. So yeah, and after that the rotor should be pretty strong. Right now these little fins are pretty loose, so this spinning at 3000 RPM definitely is a hazard, so I want to be careful and add a little bit of structure. Hey, by the way, I definitely recommend wearing safety goggles while super gluing because I once got super glue in my eye. That was not pretty. So please be careful while you're super gluing. Here I am gluing the top of the rotor so the rotor rim will have a firm connection between the two parts. All right. I believe we're done gluing. Now for the tricky part. This part was exceptionally hard because without the pegs to guide the two parts together, I was freehanding the whole thing. Let's use this. When in doubt, cardboard out. It's true. Alright. The rotor is almost done. We just gotta wait for things to dry. Then we plastic weld and we'll be done. Success. Alright, so here's the rotor. It uh, sat overnight with the uh, super glue we put on earlier. It's pretty strong, but I just want to make sure that this isn't going to go flying off at 3000 RPM. And let's, uh, let's take care of that issue once and for all by plastic welding this on so it's going to be much more permanent. So, I am just going to get my iron and just... Yep. Oh, this is so satisfying. Oh my gosh. Excellent. This is one heck of a rotor. Oh yeah. Look at that. <laughs> well, we gotta put the uh, stator around this thing. We better do that, so first things first. We gotta take off the rotor. Yeah, that's gonna be hard. But I think I have an idea. Come on, I know it's around here somewhere. My idea is, let's get a uh, flathead here. This one's pretty good. Should give me a fair amount of leverage. <sighs> Man, that is on there good. Ooh, ooh, -hoo -hoo. that was not the sound of anything breaking. I, I don't think. All right, I think we can just pull this off manually. Come on, you know you want to, you know you want to. I am not exaggerating, this is not easy. Oh gosh, come on, come on. You know you want to. Oh yeah, this is scary. Oh yeah, that's almost off. Dude, the screwdriver was bending. Come on. I need to be really careful not to damage my motor. This, isn't, this wasn't exactly cheap. Oh! I got it off! Yay! Oh wow, I now realize that this rotor does not weigh anything. This thing is like probably under a pound. That is something to take account of. Oh. Since this rotor doesn't weigh much, it's not gonna have a super long wind down like a real one. Oh well, should be good enough for me. To move on, I had to make the stator of the siren. So I printed a fourth of it, cleaned it up, but that's when I realized the part wasn't exactly how I imagined it to be. There were strange layer adhesion issues, ugly lines that streaked across the part, and other messy spots. So here we are at the end of the project. Now, things didn't really turn out exactly how I wanted them to go. Here's the rotor. You wouldn't believe what happened. Yeah, it didn't last. Now, I wish I caught it on camera, but I was taking this off the motor and it went wham on top of my workbench and unfortunately broke it really bad to the point that spinning this up at 3000 RPM is probably gonna send pieces of plastic flying everywhere. So that's fun. But I'm not gonna stop there. Still this humongous motor, which I really can't wait to use in a future project. I'm eventually gonna make a V2 of this siren and post a video about that. So you might wanna subscribe so you don't miss out on it. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really don't want to end it here, but I have so many other projects. I'm out of ideas. I have a million other projects to catch up on. I'll make videos on that, but who knows? Maybe sometime next year, 2025, I will use this motor again, and I will make a V2 of this siren. The problem was probably that this rotor is just too big. Like... There's so much air that has to get sucked into this thing. It was putting so much resistance on this motor that it literally couldn't catch up. Like, it couldn't even get the full speed. When I put something smaller on, like this, it was able to spin it up in three seconds. With this, it takes like 30 seconds to spin up. So yeah. So in the end then, this motor, while being awesome and powerful, isn't powerful enough to move this big rotor. I'll make a V2 of this siren in the future. And I'll see you in a couple videos. I'm Miles Peterson, and you stay creative. The reason why I needed that was because when I'm putting the rotor on, I don't want it to fit on two lice. Lice? <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't want it to be too tight or too loose. If it's too tight, I might never even get it on. If it's too... Wait, did I say... I said that backwards. ports were everywhere and they did not stay where they were supposed to go. Everything blobbed at the end of the day, and things really didn't go well. But there's still something fun we can do with this failed attempt, and please don't try this at home. So with those who are unfamiliar with plastic welding, you're probably going to think this is pretty cool. So here I have two little pieces. Uh, these are PETG uh, little cylinders that just didn't come out right from a previous print. This will be a perfect test subject. So. Goodness, this is... I put the uh, unfinished disc with the uh, mostly removed supports uh, on the motor. The motor's on the ground with an extension cable, and I have full control over it. Please don't try this at home, this is just for fun. Here we go.